A simple model you can create with your students takes a look at the action of our diaphragm as well as how air goes in and out of our lungs. We need a plastic water or pop bottle like this, plastic shopping bag, pair of scissors and some elastics. The idea is to cut our plastic bottle into two with our scissors and then take the shopping bag and put it over the open end using some elastics to fasten that tightly onto the plastic bottle so no air can escape the shopping bag. Once you've done that, it'll look a little bit like this. This is essentially what one of our lungs looks like. The top of our water bottle is really our trachea here and we're going to feel the air come in and out of that as the diaphragm contracts and expands underneath the plastic bag. So if you have your students put that open end of the plastic bottle close to their cheek, they'll better feel the air moving in and out. So our hand will simulate our diaphragm and if we push the plastic bag, our lung, inward, contracting our diaphragm, you'll feel the air move across your cheek. And as you pull it back, as you expand the diaphragm, you'll kind of feel it sucking air into the water bottle. And that's essentially how our lungs work. An interesting and dramatic demonstration of how sensitive our lungs are is with the simulation of, uh, of the smoking of a cigarette. You can do that with a plastic water or a pop bottle here, some cotton balls, as well as some plasticine, a cigarette, and a lighter. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your plastic bottle here, put a few damp uh, cotton balls, the reason why you want to make sure they're damp is to make sure they're quite absorbent, put them in your plastic bottle here like so. Take your plasticine, wrap it around the mouth so that it secures the cigarette inside the plastic bottle. You make sure there's a, there's a hole in your plasticine here when you wrap it in and then you can stick your cigarette inside with the filter in the, uh, in the plastic bottle. And once it's in there, it's well sealed, then I think it's a good idea to take the experiment outside because it'll make a little bit of smoke. You want to light that cigarette up and you'll squeeze the plastic bottle so as to simulate our breathing and the smoking of the cigarette. You'll see the smoke billow into the chamber, into the plastic bottle, and that'll affect our uh, cotton balls, which are simulating the tissue, the inside of our lungs. And you'll see that once you've done this experiment, they turn quite yellow. With only one cigarette, you see, you, they, they've changed color quite a bit, and that's the absorption of that tar. You can also see that the end of the cigarette in the filter, which changes color as well. And that should prompt a good discussion with your students about smoking. The digestive system is another system that plays a key role in this unit. And that is when food goes on its long journey from the mouth all the way to the anus. And that takes about 12 to 48 hours depending on the nature of the food and how healthy the individual is. So if we start at the mouth, we might take a look at a little bit of bread. Maybe uh, some white bread is ideal. I've got some brown bread here, but white works particularly well when looking at how the saliva helps break down things when we start. So if you ask your students to take a little bit of white bread and measure how sweet it is when they put it in their mouth from maybe a scale of zero to five, five being the absolute sweetest and zero being not sweet at all, right when they put it in their mouth immediately they measure that scale after five chews, ten chews, and fifteen chews on that scale from zero to five. Now that's in the mouth, and that's after they've chewed things down, particularly with their molars, like tenderizers, when they smush the meat or apples or whatever it is they're eating. It goes down the esophagus and into the stomach, where it meets some acids and gets churned around, so it breaks that food down. Obviously, the liver uh, produces some bile, which is uh, stored and, and secreted out of the gallbladder. And uh, also, we have the pancreas, which creates some digestive enzymes and puts it into the lower uh, stomach and the first part of the small intestines as well, we can simulate some of what those enzymes do with a little bit of acid. So if you take some string and you tie a little piece of meat to it, you tie the other end of the string to a popsicle stick, you dangle that into maybe some Coke or Pepsi, a carbonated beverage that is quite acidic, leave it in there for a day and see what it looks like after that. What about two days or three days? See if there's a bit of a difference and have your students take note of that. 
as the food moves along into the small intestine, it keeps on breaking down. And we can look at that with a different experiment here, particularly the breakdown of oils and fatty acids as well. If you have a half cup of warm water, put that in a glass here, and then add about a tablespoon of oil. And once you do that, mix it up really vigorously and have your students take note of what happens immediately, and then in a minute, five minutes, and then 10 minutes. Take a look at that particular experiment. Then add a little bit of dish detergent here, maybe a quarter teaspoon on the top. Have your students take a look at what happens once you stir it immediately. And then after a minute, 10 minutes, and 15 minutes as well on that same chart or, or table that you've created. It is the breaking down of fatty acids essentially. So the small intestines are about six meters long, pretty long, and they absorb all of that liquid and moisture within the food into the lining or the tissue in the small intestine so it goes into your bloodstream and circulates around your body. Ultimately that goes on to the large intestines which mops up the last bit of moisture kind of like, uh, I don't know, some tissue or some paper towel and then ultimately goes to the anus. So that, in a nutshell, is the journey of our food. A fun and interesting factoid to share with your students is how long the digestive system really is. It's almost 9 meters long, almost 30 feet with uh, a full-grown adult, which is pretty impressive to try to visualize, seeing as it's all packed in tight here with our intestines, our stomach, our esophagus. It's quite impressive. That's almost the length of a, a school bus or three stories high. If you have access to some athletics equipment, maybe they'll have a long tape measure such as this. You'll be able to give a good visual to your students for nine meters. If you don't, maybe it'll be good to get some string and have your students count out nearly 30 steps. It'll be pretty impressive to see how long that really is. When addressing the nervous system and the musculoskeletal system with your students, a popular activity is to look at reaction or response time with your students. You can do this using a meter stick or a very popular 30 centimeter ruler because you'll probably have quite a few of these in your classroom. Put your students in pairs and partner A will hold one end of the ruler stick with the highest number, in this case 30 centimeters, in one hand and they're going to face their partner like so and partner B is going to use their lobster claw grip just like that and they're going to put it at the bottom of the ruler where it says zero centimeters in this case. Partner A is going to drop the ruler but he's not going to say right when they're going to do it because we don't want partner B to be able to predict when that will be. So they're going to drop it maybe in the next five seconds after they, they suggest that they will. And when they do, partner B is going to grab the ruler. And you're going to see the distance that the ruler fell right where they grabbed it. In this case, it says 18 centimeters. And that is really a reflection of our visual information that we've seen with our eyes. And we've processed that with our brains and a motor command response is sent to our arm, our hand, and our fingers to grab that ruler right away. A twist that we can throw in to see if it dices up our results is to have your students uh, grab a stress ball or a tennis ball. And they can squeeze it really hard about 25 times. Do the experiment over again, see if there's a difference. What causes that difference and how might we prevent that might be questions for your students. For each uh, time that they drop the ruler, you can have your students do trials of five uh, and take the average, the mean value, distance, to see what number will come up for their reaction time. They could also take this particular experiment home to do with their families and their friends, and in a table they could measure the reaction time for gender, uh, age, you could look at non-dominant hand versus dominant hand, or something as trivial as whether someone's sleepy or really attentive after maybe eating a bowl of uh, Captain Crunch or something. Some interesting results might be produced. In this video we used a variety of models, demonstrations, and simulations to look at the location, the structure, and the function of a variety of major organs within the respiratory, circulatory, and digestive systems. 
We also had a chance to look briefly at the nervous system and the musculoskeletal system as well. Now the idea here is to give you some ideas to work with in the classroom. You might expand your horizons as per the potential of some activities. The idea really is to engage your students and to really jump out there and get hands on. So we've got a number of resources appended on this web page to give you even more ideas to do that. Good luck and have fun. Thank you.